sent to the court on the defendant's behalf, which shed light on the defendant's personal and home life. What my review of all of the materials submitted in this case clearly demonstrates is that Mr. Pessoa, like most human beings, is not a one-dimensional figure. It's difficult, if not impossible, to square the Michael Pessoa on the videotape assaulting and beating a defenseless David LaFrance with the Michael Pessoa, who uh, rushed into a burning building to save an elderly woman, the Michael Pessoa, who's adored a son, brother, uncle, and cousin who organizes basketball clinics for city youth and participates in charitable Thanksgiving and Christmas drives for the needy. Impossible to square those two figures. Lastly, uh, I have considered, and this is a factor that weighs heavily on the court, that in committing these crimes, Mr. Pessoa violated the public trust. There's no question, no question whatsoever, that the job of a police officer is a dangerous and difficult one. A job uh, that deserves the community's admiration and respect. However, when police officers commit misconduct, particularly misconduct involving excessive force, it erodes the public trust and cuts to the core of the criminal justice system. Without public confidence in the police, the safety of the community, and of fellow law enforcement officers is at risk. This has been a difficult case. It's a difficult sentencing task. I have fashioned a sentence which I believe and hope encompasses all of these factors and a just
on indictment 1973 CR 182-5, charging with assault and battery. The jury having found you guilty and the court having considered the offense for which you now stand convicted, it is the order of this court that you be placed on probation for a period of one year from and after your incarceration on indictment number seven. On indictment 1973 CR 182-6, the jury having found you guilty to so much of this indictment that alleges civil rights violation, and the court having considered the offense for which you now stand convicted, it is the order of this court that you be placed on probation for one year from and after your incarceration on indictment seven. Said probation is to run concurrent with the probation imposed on indictment five. On indictment 1973 CR 182-8, charging you with false report by a public employee, the jury having found you guilty of this offense and the court having considered the offense for which you now stand convicted, it is the order of this court that you be placed on probation for one year, again from and after your incarceration and in indictment seven, and concurrent with your probation on indictments five and six. You have the right to appeal the judgment of the court to the appeals court of the Commonwealth within 30 days. You also have a right to appeal the sentence to the appellate division of the Superior Court within 10 days. I must advise you that having been convicted of these offenses, it is now your obligation to comply with the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 22E, Section 3, the State DNA Database, by providing a sample of your DNA to the State DNA Database within one year of your conviction. The general conditions of probation that the court imposes include that you shall obey all local, state, and federal laws and all court orders, that you shall report to your assigned probation officer at such time and place as directed. You shall notify the probation officer immediately of a change of residence or employment. You shall not leave Massachusetts without the express permission of the probation service, and if permission is granted, you shall sign a waiver of extradition and rendition before traveling. If you are incarcerated, you shall report to the probation service within 48 hours after you are released from incarceration or on the next business day following a weekend or court holiday. You shall immediately inform the probation service of any new criminal charges against you, you shall allow the probation officer to visit you at home, school, or place of employment at any time with or without notice. <clears throat> you shall sign all releases necessary for supervision and verification of compliance with these conditions of probation. <clears throat> you shall not unlawfully receive, possess, control, or transport any drugs, weapons, explosives, firearms, or ammunition. You shall pay all court order assessments and fees. In addition to those conditions, the court has imposed the following special conditions, which as I just stated, is the requirement that you shall submit a DNA sample uh, pursuant to General Law Chapter 22, e, Section 3. Also, the court orders that you shall have no direct or indirect contact with David LaFrance. The court has also imposed a $90 victim witness fee and a statutory uh, DNA assessment fee. If you violate any of the conditions of your probation while you're incarcerated and prior to the commencement of the term of your probation, your probation may be subject to revocation. I also must advise you that all fees and fines shall be paid by the end date of your probation. Failure to appear on that date or make payment by that date may result in your default and or incarceration. If payment of the fees and fines will cause a substantial hardship to you, your immediate family, or your dependents, you may petition the court for relief by filing an appropriate motion and affidavit. You will also be awarded time spent in confinement on this matter, which I think is 22 days, May 31st, until today. At this time, you stay in custody of the court officers and execution of your sentence. Thank you, Your Honor. Counsel, what is it? Thank you, Your Honor.